Monday, May 28th, and it's Memorial Day, and my husband is home from work today, so I thought uh, today would be the perfect day to sit down and have a little chat and uh, record a podcast. So it's been a busy couple of weeks for us. We just got back a few days ago from Redmond, Oregon, where my husband was having this work conference thing. He goes there every spring, and this is the first time that my daughter and I have uh, gone with him, and he took a one day extra off of work so we could have some family time and uh, explore the area, which I've driven through Redmond, Oregon and Bend and Central Oregon plenty of times, but I just, um, I never knew how beautiful it was out there. I was thinking it would be a lot more arid and boring for some reason, but it, it's, it is uh, the high desert and it's quite flat, but um, it's beautiful. You can see all the mountains. If you get anywhere up where there's elevation, you can see all of the mountains. Or if you're like in one of the flat areas and the trees open up, you, you can see everything. And the drive out there was just gorgeous. We took the scenic route through Highway 22, um, through the mountain pass. And um, anytime you go through the mountains here, it's just, it's just beautiful. Um, we did see a bunch of dead trees and we were like, what is going on with that? And we remembered that there were forest fires out there last summer because it got so dry and so hot. But it was so sad to see the trees, you know, just completely, just patches of them, you know, dead. But it was really beautiful. And I felt so refreshed after we got back from our trip, which is usually not the case. Um, usually after a trip like that, I will be exhausted and I'll need to take a day or two kind of to myself and just sleep extra and <laughs> kind of get back in the swing of things. But I felt so rejuvenated and I wanted to just do everything. So I guess it was a um, very much needed time away. We stayed in this little resort duplex thing and it totally wasn't my style <laughs> at all. But it was any time that I get a chance to kind of stay somewhere new, I think it's exciting. And uh, there was lots of space for Ella to run around and. They had a really big bathtub <laughs> that was like a pool almost. Um, so I took advantage of that. And there were a couple of really neat um, local yarn shops that I wanted to talk about. In Sisters, Oregon, there's this place called Alpaca by Design and they have a lot of like um, sweaters and blankets and toys and things. Um, and we stopped in in there and they did have a tiny little corner where they sold local alpaca. So I wanted to show you that. Here's the logo. And I came home with these two skeins. These are from Happy Hounds Alpaca Ranch, which is grown right there in Sisters, Oregon. It is a worsted weight, super fine alpaca yarn. And I love it. I don't really know what I'm gonna make with it yet. I th I'm thinking I might make my husband a cow because I have this cow it's hanging right there that I made out of baby alpaca. It's like a three by one rib and he wears it sometimes and he likes it. And I think he needs more like accessory type of things because in the winter he'll crank the heat up in his office to like 80 something. And I go in there and I'm just like, are you kidding me? So I think he needs like wool socks and cowls and mittens and <laughs> A bunch of things that he can wear while he's in his office because that is ridiculous 80 degrees across from alpaca by design and sort of catty corner was a place called the stitchin post i believe i didn't buy anything from there uh, but i think if you're a quilter you're going to want to go there and they had this corner um, where they sold yarn and it was good yarn it was like the fiber company and uh, i can't remember what the rest of it was but it was some good stuff. So the next day we went to a yarn shop called Fancy Work Yarns, I think. The reviews online said that they, it was a fairly new yarn shop and um, that they sold a lot of local wool. So I was like, I have to go check it out. I loved the vibe of that shop immediately from the moment that I stepped foot in. And you could tell that they had lots of really nice yarns. They had on one wall, like the indie dyed yarns which I didn't really um, look that closely at just because it wasn't what I was there for. But um, on the other wall, they had their local wool. I wasn't even able to kind of see all of it because there was a group of ladies at the table and I didn't want to scooch behind them, but that's okay because I found what I wanted. So I came home with three skeins of this Naftaland 100% uh, Jacob Sheep. This is it. 
and it's a two ply sport weight yarn. They call this colorway Bella and they had in the display um, yarns from Bella and uh, yarns from a couple different other names and I didn't know if that was just because that's the name of the sheep or what but that would make sense if that's the case. I think I'm going to make a shawl with these. Like a big shawl. I'm on a bit of a uh, shawl kick right now. I realized last winter that I just don't have that many shawls. Like I thought I had more. And then I also found a couple skeins of this Lannis Lana Fine Rambouillet wool. Uh, it's a fingering weight yarn, approximately 500 yards, two ply. Um, and she says, the yarn shop owner, that this is the same, the exact same stuff that is used for the Brooklyn Tweeds um, new base Rancho One. And I didn't know that when I picked it up, but uh, it's beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I thought I could dye this naturally and probably turn it into a shawl. Um, whenever I go into a yarn shop without a plan, I'll pick up just two skeins of something because usually that's a safe bet. This is so nice. I can I can totally see that this would be a Brooklyn Tweed base. <laughs> so and then I also got a couple of accessories for my Chowgu needles. I got a another cable connector. Um, my set comes with cable connectors, but there's only there's not that many. And then I got this interchangeable adapter, um, small tip to mini cable. Uh, thing. So I thought that was cool because this means that I can use my cables for my small set um, with my mini sized, my like little twist minis. So yeah, if you're in the central Oregon, the Bend area, um, definitely check out Fancy Work Yarn Shop um, or even the Alpaca by Design Shop if you're looking for some local fibers because all of that is really beautiful and I can't wait to turn it into something. Um, we got home on Thursday, we sort of took our time with it, enjoyed the drive, and when I got back, I um, immediately went out to the garden and did some thinning. That's one of the things I like about leaving for a trip, uh, is that when you get back, so much is different in the yard and you can see like different flowers that have bloomed and we have strawberries that are growing and um, will should hopefully be turning red soon and raspberries and blueberries and yeah, just a lot of really exciting things happening in the garden. I did plant a bunch of seeds for my um, dye garden that I got from botanicalcolors.com and um, they're all just starting to uh, pop out of the ground right now. So I think within the next month, we're gonna see a lot of really, really pretty flowers back there and I'm excited. So today we have a giveaway winner and a new giveaway. So the giveaway winner is for the stacking wood sock pattern that I talked about in the last episode. Uh, many of you guys left me comments saying what your favorite thing about spring was and I will be choosing a winner from that comment section and I'm going to insert that clip right here. So I am choosing a winner for the stacking wood sock pattern from my last video. Uh, I put the URL for the video here and uh, said there's 205 unique commenters. We're going to start the raffle and pick a random winner. The winner is Kelly Precious. And Kelly says, oh, bird song. Congratulations, Kelly. Um, I will get in touch with you on YouTube if I can and um, try to get your information. And I will also be in touch with Estella about getting you um, a copy of the pattern. So thank you so much to everyone who participated. Um, and yeah. So speaking of giveaways, um, I am really, really excited to announce that today I'm going to be hosting a giveaway for um, Making Stories latest issue, Breeze. I talked about this in, in the last episode a little bit, but I got my copy of this um, while I was in Redmond and picked it up from the post office on the way home. And I just love it. It's even more beautiful in person. So if you don't know anything about Making Stories, it's an independent knitwear design publisher based in Berlin, and it's run and owned by Verena Kors and Hannelisa Hafferke. And their whole motivation is to shine a light on designers from around the world and to really focus on ethical and sustainable 
fibers. And you really get a sense of that as you're flipping through this book and um, reading interviews from each of the designers and the folks who make the yarns and you get a sense that they really care. So you may know from my last episode that I was asked to be an ambassador, which basically means that um, not only do I host a giveaway for this for one copy, but I also um, was able to choose a pattern in this issue and host a little mini knit along, which is going on right now. And the garment that I chose to knit is the Norte cardigan, which is right here. It's probably the warmest garment in this whole issue because the designs are mostly catered, I think, for you know summer and spring, warmer weather. But I just love this cardigan so much. And I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later um, when I talk about works in progress because um, I wanna give it its own space. But really quickly, I just wanted to show you some of the other designs in here that I find myself drawn to. And there's a lot of them. I, I really love them all. One is this Aroshi shawl, which is just kind of a uh, lacy shawl with fringe. And I love it. There's also these Meltemi socks, which looks so cozy. And then there's the Marin top, which I almost chose. First of all, Marin is my daughter's middle name. Um, but I, I just love garments that have texture. Okay, I'll just show you one more because <laughs> I really could probably knit every single pattern in this issue. I really love the cornmeal um, top here. It's a raglan top and it's got these really pretty designs kind of down the sides and where the raglan increases are. It's just a really simple, pretty detail that I like. So anyway, if you would like to win a copy of Bree's Making Stories, then please leave a comment below this video on YouTube answering the question, what would you like to knit first from this issue? I will choose and announce a winner in the next podcast episode, and then the Making Stories folk will send you out your copy. <laughs>so my first finished object is something that looks a lot like this i knit a cover um, just like this using my leftover um, abundant earth fiber joseph and annie yarn which is the same yarn that i used to make my tales from the isle of perbeck shawl which i showed you in the last episode i have a friend who recently had a baby and before her baby was born we got together for a blessing way, or I guess you can also call it a, um, a belly blessing. I really, it's the first belly blessing I've ever been to, and I really enjoyed it because unlike sort of your traditional baby shower, which is all about the baby, this is sort of uh, something that you do to kind of uplift the mother and to encourage her and to just be there for her, and it's, it's really about her. So I wanted to make my friend a gift that was, um, that was about her. And I remember after I had my baby, um, I was so cold, like, you know, the baby's born and all this weird stuff happens to your body and um, you don't have that extra warmth and your hormones are changing and your blood is, um, I guess, thinning back out. <laughs> and I just remember being so cold and like my husband, I had him put like five blankets on top of me at one point and just like, um, I, I really would have loved to have had something like this um, after I had my daughter just to fill up with warm water and to hug. <laughs> so I thought maybe she would like something like that too. And I made her one and I gave it to her and um, I'm, I hope that she's using it and that she's loving it. I'm not going to ask, but um, yeah, so it's with her now and um, I wish I could show it to you. I wish I'd taken a photo, but it's one of those things like... Every once in a while, I'll just like quickly knock out a gift and a day or two and, um, and then I won't even think about, you know, taking a photo or recording it. And that, that's what happened here. But I, I think I've talked about these hot water bo bottle cozies in the past um, in one of my Vlogmas episodes because there was one Christmas where I made like 12 of these and gave them to friends and family for Christmas. And 
Um, I got a lot of really positive feedback um, about those because who doesn't want something to just cuddle up with and stay warm? <laughs> so the pattern that I use for this is Rachel's ISBN Cable Hot Water Bottle Cozy by uh, Yarnagogo. And when I made these for Christmas, I sort of used the base pattern, which is, you know, you start with a certain number of stitches down here and then you increase and then you knit, 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 knit with the cable running down the middle and then you decrease and then you do a long sort of neck in ribbing that you can fold over and that's nice and stretchy. And I did several of them like this and then I kind of went my own way and did the like the increases and the decreases but then did like different kinds of cables. And some of them I just made them stripey, some of them I did some color blocking or uh, maybe it would go one color here and then the neck a different color. I did all kinds of different things and it was such a great stash busting project for me. That's how I got to stash zero at the end of um, 2016. I don't have stash zero or anywhere close to it right now, but um, but that's before natural dyeing was a thing in my life. And so, um, but yeah, it was it was just wonderful to be able to use up all my to use up all my yarn scraps and to give them away as gifts. And uh, I just I really highly recommend this as a gift if you're looking for something, especially something that um, you can give to someone who isn't feeling well, or um, just someone who you want to give a hug to. So my second finished object is almost dry. I had to go pull it off my blocking mats really quickly and it's a lot drier than I thought it would be, but uh, this is my campsite shawl. I still have to weave in my ends, but it is done. It maybe doesn't go so well with my green cardigan, but I love it. So this is the second shawl in a row that I've made using a yarn and a needle size that uh, give a different gauge than the original pattern calls for. And the campsite shawl calls for a DK weight yarn and I used a fingering weight yarn. So um, I think that this is supposed to be like one of those big giant cozy shawls and for me it's going to be more of a like shawlette which is kind of perfect for these spring days. So while I was in Redmond, I um, I brought my Tales from the Isle of Purbeck shawl and I wore it constantly. It was the thing that I took around in the car with me and whenever we would go outside, I, I would wrap it around and I didn't bring a jacket or anything and it was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. I do plan on making some bigger shawls, like big cozy winter shawls, but right now um, these sort of smaller shawlette size shawls have been exactly what I wanted. So I did make a couple of changes um, and they were inadvertent. Pattern, I think when you go to switch from doing the eyelets to the ribbing, you're supposed to do the increases just in stockinette so the ribbing doesn't continue. But I wasn't paying enough attention to the pattern and I just kind of made that ribbing continue on. It looks just the tiniest bit sloppy and I wish I would kind of done it the way that it's done in the pattern because I like that that look. So if you, you can kind of see it there. I just like it. It's one of the features of the pattern that I enjoy. And I don't dislike this enough that I would um, change anything, but, or that I would bother to rip it back and change it. I do wish I'd paid a little bit more attention. And the other thing that I did that it was more of a result of just me not paying attention more than anything else is um, for the spine when you're on the right side you're supposed to knit through the back loop and I didn't do that and it's fine Let's see if I can find a good picture of how it's supposed to look it doesn't really change the look that much but that just kind of goes to show you that um, you reach a, a certain point with knitting where uh, you look at a simple pattern like this and you think, oh, I got this, um, and you don't read, or at least I don't uh, fully read the instructions, and I, I just kind of wish I'd pay a little bit more attention, and I, I would do, I find myself doing that with patterns a lot, um, especially socks, because I know that I'm gonna do the heel that I want to do, and I'm gonna do the toe that I want to do, and I'm gonna modify it however I want to modify it, so I often don't end up reading the instructions all the way, and sometimes I regret that, so, but anyway, <laughs> I love this yarn. 
Um, I love this pattern. I think I would have loved to have made it using a rustic yarn, so I may do that someday, but I don't wear a lot of color in my wardrobe, but I wear a lot of black um, and brown and blue. And so I find that every once in a while I wanna add like a pop of something. And I've been wanting to try Maria Tuscan's yarn um, for ages and I'm not disappointed. This is her for a base, which is a singles merino. And um, it's in the colorway Finlogan. And I really, really like it. <laughs> it's beautiful. I will be interested to see how it wears over time because I've never um, knit anything with a singles merino, I don't think, before. So um, I have a little bit of this yarn left over and I might use it to make a, um, a little baby bonnet for my friend's new baby. I think that it would be um, really nice and soft and it's super washed so it can be thrown in the washer and dryer. I have a bunch of stuff on the needles right now, but most of it is stuff that you've already seen and that I haven't made much progress on. So I'm just gonna share the new thing um, in this episode, which is the Norte cardigan. I think in the last episode I was talking about how I was waiting for the yarn to arrive. I think it, it arrived about a week and a half ago, which was took a lot less time than I thought it would. And it is, I, I fell in love the minute that I saw it. It's just so beautiful. Um, it's rustic, yet soft. It's got the lanolin still in it. It smells amazing. <laughs> Smells so good. And it's lamb's wool from Fin Sheep. Um, each skein is 100 grams and um, it's a two ply fingering weight. So I immediately set to swatching um, as soon as I got the yarn. And um, I started with a uh, US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter. Um, and I, I did the suggested an, um, uh, amount of stitches and rows and um, I was supposed to get four inches I'm lucky if this is even three inches. Um, and usually I feel like I have to go down a needle size most of the time. But in this case, I definitely had to go up. So I went up to a US three and I was able to get almost four inches. It's still a little bit shy. Um, if you ignore the garter edge, it's actually more of a square. Um, and even though this is not quite um, four inches, I really didn't want to go up any further than this because I wanted that fabric to remain dense and it's starting to get a little bit airier. Um, and also, um, I've spoken about this a little bit before, but I've been losing some weight and um, so I wanted to kind of account for that. I'm knitting the cardigan in the fourth size, which is a bust size of 46.5, and you're supposed to have uh, three to four inches of positive ease. But if, I figured if I um, knit it at a, a gauge that's smaller, just by a little bit, that uh, it might account for, um, it might account for that. And it might end up a little bit smaller. And so far it seems to be working out okay. Um, I just recently separated the sleeves and I'm a couple inches past that point. So I was able to um, try it on and it seems like it's fitting pretty well so far. This is what I have so far. And here's the back. I can't get over how good this smells. And I really, really like it. I really, really like it. We're at the point now where um, it's mostly just stockinette and uh, the occasional increase. And it's really easy just to kind of watch TV and knit on this right now. So I imagine I'm gonna get this done really quickly because it's all I'm really working on. So as an ambassador 
uh, for Breeze Making Stories, I am hosting a mini knit along with the designer um, for this cardigan. That is happening sort of on Instagram is where people are posting about it. And also there is a Ravelry thread in the Making Stories Ravelry group, um, specifically for the Norte cardigan and also for the Breeze knit along. Um, for the whole issue and the knit along is running from now until june 30th and um i'm pretty sure you don't even have to finish the cardigan to be um you know part of it and there are going to be prizes so if you are interested in knitting this beautiful cardigan along with us um then please feel free to join us in um and share about your cardigan on Instagram using the following hashtags and also post about your progress on uh, the Making Stories Ravelry thread, which I will link in the description box below. <laughs> So first things first, I am going to be having my next shop update June 3rd at 8 o'clock PST. So that's next Sunday. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the things that have been coming out of my dye pot lately because I feel like I've been so busy that I haven't even really shared a lot of it on social media. So let's talk about it a little bit. First, I've been working with Cochineal, which is kind of new for me. Um, and I've been kind of surprised at the results because I thought that Cochineal meant like red. And I'm sure that there are things you can do like adjusting the pH or something like that, that um, will give you that uh, bright bright red. Um, but what I've been getting mostly are pinks, kind of like these. So when I first dyed, uh, this is an eco merino. Um, it, it was so obnoxiously pink. <laughs> that I felt compelled to tone it down with an iron bath and it really did tone it down even though this is still kind of a crazy pink and you can kind of see um, some of the purples that have come through um, in the skeins. I've got five of these I think. Um, this was also dyed in the same way as this but this is a blend of Tarki and uh, Columbia wool and it's a little bit more rustic. I It was crazy, crazy pink and I stuck it in an iron bath and it turned into this like definitely like more of a rose pink, uh, much more tolerable color with gray tones, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I really like this one and I'm gonna keep one skein of this for myself to do something with, but there are gonna be three of these in the shop. This I did some twist dyeing with and it was also obnoxious. It's a sock yarn. It's a merino cashmere nylon base and I um, gave it an iron bath and there are some purple tones in it as well. And there are gonna be a few of these in the shop. This is the kind of thing that like I would continue to play around with, maybe do some indigo or whatever, but I just feel like I'll put it in the shop and if anyone wants to buy it, then, um, then I won't continue to play with it. And if um, nobody buys it, then I will, so. But I thought there was a chance that maybe someone out there would really like this. So we'll see what happens. And then this, I love. It's a blend of walnut and cochineal. And I'd have to go back and look at my notes to see like what I did exactly, but I think that I dyed it with walnut first and then I over dyed it with cochineal. And wow, I love it. And this base is a um, an American sock base that was processed 100% here in the United States that I'm trying out. I really, really like it. There are just areas where uh, lots of different like browns and kind of pinks come through. And then I um, was kind of playing with uh, logwood and cochineal uh, using sort of low immersion techniques, just seeing what, what would happen. And this was one result. This is probably my favorite, really. Um, it just has really subtle, um, you can barely tell where the cochineal is, honestly, but there's just tiny little pops of pink that you can see every once in a while. And the logwood really came through quite a bit. And I did put this in iron, which is why the logwood turned kind of gray. And I think it's really, really pretty. And then I have a few skeins of this, which um, was done in a really similar way, but with higher amounts of uh, 
logwood and cochineal. So it's a little bit darker. And I like how this one turned out too. I've got a few of these. And then I think these are nuts. <laughs> this one I had in the bath with like actual pieces of logwood bark and I kind of sprinkled in some cochineal extract and I'm not really sure what happened to make these like dark kind of brown speckles, but I thought it was kind of interesting and um, yeah, this is crazy. But again, I thought maybe somebody might like it. So I'm gonna put it in the shop and see what happens. I think there are two of these. You know me, I like my neutrals, so I think anything like this is nuts. <laughs> but it's fun to dye. And then here's something that I was quite surprised with, and it's kind of a mishmash of things. For these skeins, um, I'm gonna have to look up in my diary, but I'm pretty sure that these were dyed with coffee and logwood and avocado. And they were kind of this brown color. And... I wasn't really feeling it, so I just decided, okay, I'm gonna stick you in iron and see what happened. And they turned like black almost, and then dried this sort of like brown, blue, steel color. And I, I love the way that these turned out. There's gonna be four of them in the shop, and this is on the um, sock base that's processed here in the United States. So yeah, this was very exciting. I think that's the darkest color result that I've had so far. And yeah, I could keep going forever, but I just wanted to share one more Thing with you and it's um, the skins of matter and the reason I wanted to share this with you is because um, somebody contacted me on Ravelry asking if I could um, make a color um, that was similar to the color that I use for my daughter's cardigan I think it was her Alfred's cardigan I can't remember which cardigan it was but um, it was uh, made using a yarn that was dyed with matter like this but in my attempts to recreate the color, I really haven't <laughs> come close. And that's just because that's the nature of natural dyeing. Um, and I just, I'm not really sure that I can do pre-orders. I'm not really sure if natural dyeing is set up for that or that even my style of natural dyeing uh, would really work with that. So um, I think what I'm gonna have to do is just dye stuff and put it in the shop and what's there is what's there and, um, I just don't think I can do pre-orders. I don't think that that's going to work um, for me and with what I'm capable of doing with natural dyes. I mean, that's the thing that I like about natural dyeing is that every time it's a little bit different, you know? Even in the same batch, the skeins look different. And um, I really like this, but it's not what she was asking for. And so, so I just thought I would put that out there in case any of you guys were um, wondering if I was planning on doing um, like pre-orders in the future because um, I just don't know if it would really work for natural dyeing. Those are my thoughts on that anyway. And I know that this has been a really long episode so far so I just want to very briefly kind of talk about the natural dye knit along. Um, I, I want to share some of the people's projects um, in the next episode but um, for now I'm going to keep it really quick and just tell you that I received in the mail um, the prize donation from Abundant Earth Fiber for the winners of the Natural Dye Knit Along. And I know I shared about this a little bit on Instagram, but I wanted to show you anyway here. Um, they sent me three skeins of uh, their Verdant Base, which is an 80% US Merino and 20% US Rambouillet. Um, so three skeins of the light gray. And three skeins of the same base in their white color. And both would be really great to dye with if you wanted to do that, or they'd be great on their own without any dye. Um, the yarn is soft, it's bouncy. Um, I think it would have great stitch definition. I kind of squealed a little bit when I saw these because it's just such a, everything from Abundant Earth Fiber is so, so beautiful. And I wanted to remind you that if you would like to make a purchase from Abundant Earth Fiber, then please um, use the coupon code NEST2018. You will get a 15% discount on your order. 
I'm just really excited about all of this. And I would share some of the um, projects that have come in for the Natural Dine It Along on both Ravelry and Instagram, but I am just completely parched because I feel like I've been talking for hours. So I'm going to save that for the next episode. Um, but if you would like to be inspired by natural dyeing, then please just check out the natural dye knit along hashtag on Instagram or go into the Ravelry thread and look at what people are doing because it has been, um, really inspiring. People are doing some really cool things. <sighs> I'm going to go take a nap now. Okay. Bye.